In this video, I'm going to show you how to crop your videos or photos in Premiere Pro. So, unlike in Photoshop where you use crop to select the exact part of your photo that you want to keep, which results in a new aspect ratio, in video you set the aspect ratio first and then use the crop tool to crop or chop out the parts of your image or video that you don't want. To use the crop tool, you go up to effects up here or you go into window and click on effects which will open up this effects panel over here. You can type in crop to find it right there, or you can go into video effects and go down to transform and find it right here. Then you just click it and you drag it onto the clip that you want to crop, and it should appear in your effect controls right over here. The main function of the crop tool is pretty obvious. It allows you to crop from the left, the top, the right, and the bottom right here. And there's three ways to do that. One, you can click right in here on the number and just type in what percentage you want to crop off. And that will chop off 25% of your image. The second way is to just click on the number and drag to the right or the left. And that'll allow you to see it being cropped in real time. And then the third way is to click on the word crop up here, which will create this blue box around and allows you to just manually maneuver your sides, the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. The main thing to be aware of is that whatever you crop right here will reveal whatever is below your clip on the timeline. So in this case, we have nothing below it, so it reveals black. But if we click over here and crop some more, you will see that it actually reveals whatever is below. So if you have another video or image below, that one will start to show up. The more you slide to the right, the more of your image gets chopped off all the way up to 100%, which means your whole clip has been chopped now. And obviously, the more you go to the left, the less of your image gets chopped off all the way down to zero, which means now that nothing is chopped off anymore. Once you have your desired crop, the next thing to consider is the placement and size of your image. So let's go up here to position and scale. If you click on this one and slide to the right, your image will move right and to the left is left. And then for this one, when you click and slide to the right, your image moves down and to the left, it moves up. And then obviously scale, if you click and slide to the right, it will enlarge it and left is to shrink it. So I'm gonna enlarge a little bit and just move off to the right. And then obviously to finish this split screen effect, I have to click on the other image, the one that's below, and move it to the left so that they both can reveal in their own kind of squares here. But if you notice, this one's now a little bit too big, so I might click back on this one and crop a little bit more off the left of that one. On a side note, if you have a video that is much larger than your frame, so let's say a 4K video on a 1080 sequence, then you might not notice a crop right away. Like I'm sliding it here and nothing's happening. It's because if I keep going, you see, I won't start seeing the crop until what, 26%. At 25, it's nothing. And at 26, now we can finally start seeing the crop. So if you really want to see it, go down to like 10% here and then click on crop and you can see now that's the full crop. So I was dealing with 0% right there and watch the numbers over here going as I crop this. It's still cropping, 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 but I'm not cropping anything because the frame has already cropped some of this image out. So from this side, this side, this side, none of that is doing anything until I go beyond the edge of the frame. All right, now let's take a look at some of the other capabilities of the crop tool, starting with this stupid zoom thing right here. Just don't ever use it. It's meant to, when you click it, to fill up the frame, but as you can see, it just stretches everything out and makes it look stupid. So unclick it, and if you need to scale this up to be the full frame size, just do what I showed you before. Use scale and position to fill the frame up instead so that you can maintain the proper aspect ratio. The next feature we're gonna look at is edge feather, and you can slide this to the left or the right, and you can see that the at zero, it is that the harsh line, the transition from a, a perfect like rectangle line here, and if we slide to the left, the blur kinda of happens, but it encroaches on our image, it goes back in towards our image, and if we go into the positives, it actually expands, the blur transition expands. So just be aware that if you expand it, it's now gonna start to like overlap with another image if you have it like this. 
So you might want to shift your edge back here a little bit to make the transition back towards the middle. If we look at it with just a black screen, you can see that the more we slide this over, the more the transition just moves, like the gradient of transition moves. But if you go too far and you reach the end of your clip, it'll just be back to being a solid line again. One way to use crop and edge feather is to create a simple clone video where the crop and edge feather are between the two clones. If we try to use edge feather on a clip that fills the entire frame, when you go to the right, nothing will happen. But if you go to the left, you can actually create kind of like a vignette effect if you want. The next thing we'll take a look at are these three tools right here. So the ellipse mask, the four point polygon mask, and the free draw bezier. But to be honest, I never use them in here as part of the crop tool. I prefer to use them as part of opacity up here because I feel like they're much more functional. Which means I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about them in this video, but if you want to know more about them, then check out the link in the description below. Having said that, let's take a quick look, but I'm gonna use them up in opacity over here. So if you click on this one, you can see that it makes an ellipse that you can move around and adjust uh, the size by dragging these out. And if you go out to the side here, you can rotate it as well. If we look at the difference between what that would look like, if I take this mask off, if we did it with the crop tool, so when I click on it with the crop tool, it just puts the circle in that we can move and then you still have to go down here and crank up this and click invert to get the same effect. So just kind of a waste of time down there. The rectangle or polygon one is pretty self-explanatory. You can maneuver these uh, corners to whatever shape that you want and rotate it and whatever. And if you wanna make it into a triangle, you can hold control and then click on whatever dot corner that you wanna get rid of and boom, it's gone. The last one here, the free draw bezier is the most powerful one because it allows you to click and make whatever shape you want and put as many dots as you want to create that shape and all the same rules apply. These mask tools can be used to create the like blurry face effect, cool wipe transitions and even more complicated special effects. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to animate your crops. So what you're going to do is you're going to put the playhead where you want your crop animation to start. So I'm gonna go about right there and you're gonna go over here and you have to decide which of these is going to be the animated crop. So is it gonna crop from the left? Is it gonna crop from the top? You know, whatever. I'm just gonna stick with the left and you're gonna to click toggle animation and that's gonna put a keyframe at the spot that your playhead was at. Make sure you're clicked on the clip that you actually wanna crop. And then you're gonna move your playhead to wherever you want the crop animation to end and this time you're gonna click right here to add another keyframe. Now you just have to place a value on each of these crops. So I'm gonna leave, if I click on this little arrow that brings me to this first one that we added, the first keyframe, I'm gonna leave that at zero and I'm just gonna show you a basic wipe over here and I'm gonna change this one all the way to 100. And you can see it animating right there to the end and when I click here and play you can see it wiping. Now. I already have a, an edge feather on there, so you can see that you can apply an edge feather to make it more of a smooth kind of wipe. But if you take it off, then that's gonna look exactly like the regular wipe. The good part about doing it on the crop tool though is you don't have to go all the way to 100%. Like you don't have to wipe all the way across. So you could go to like 50%. So if I was doing that, I'd probably move this keyframe over to earlier in the clip, and I would change this to like 50 and maybe move this bottom clip over. So you could reveal to like halfway like that and then watch the split screen. Now, if you wanted to also move this clip over so that it was more centered over here, all you do is click on this little arrow to line up with your first keyframe as the wipe begins, put one on position up here, and then go to your second keyframe right here, click another one, and then just use this to slide it over and then you're gonna have to change this crop. So you have to bring this back to like there. So then when we watch it, it's gonna go wow. And I bet you didn't even notice that it was moving over to the right as it was cropping. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about the crop tool in Premiere Pro. If you got something out of this video or you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I will catch you next time.